Sky Sports proudly presents the Carlsberg National Basketball Championships. <laughs> The Thames Valley Tigers are through to their second successive Carlsberg Championship final at Wembley. In yesterday's semi-final, the London Towers pushed them all away. But in the end, the Tigers' strength and power proved decisive. Mickey Bett, in his first year as coach, threw to the biggest game of the year. Now they face the winners of the league, the Worthing Bears. They had a whirlwind start against the Guildford Kings, taking a 27-12 lead. The Kings, Wembley champions for the last three years, hit back, but at the final buzzer, Worthing and their charismatic player coach, Alan Cunningham, were home by just one point. Hello, welcome to Wembley's Night of the Year, an 8,000-seater sellout. It's a fantastic atmosphere brewing behind me. Alongside me is Kevin Cadle, who's not only Great Britain a coach, of course, but he's also the coach of the Guildford Kings, who lost yesterday to Worthing. That must have been a, a bitter pill to swallow, Kevin. It could have been, but in a game, you look for hard work, commitment, intensity. And the game yesterday featured all of it. Both teams played their heart out, and you can ask for no more. You had to have a winner, you had to have a loser. We just ended up on the short end. But I'm going to break Alan Cunningham's legs at this all over with, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about Alan Cunningham. He told us he wasn't going to play much yesterday. Well, that all changed, but he must be shattered after that experience. Well, Alan is a big game player, and he likes to showcase. And the thing is, Alan has more guts than both teams, players, personnel put together. And so you're going to look for Allen to be there at the big game. Right. Fatigue, though, must play a factor. Who's going to be more fatigued? I would have to think Worthing will probably be more fatigued. Their game was a tougher, a much more physical game. They had a little bit less time to rest. So I think the fatigue factor would be with them. Plus, they don't have any substitutes. Right. So Thames Valley are going to run them hard. I'll put you on the line. Who's going to win? Uh... This, that's, this, this is a tough one to call. It depends on how well Tim's Valley bench plays. If the bench from Tim's Valley contributes, then they'll win the game. Right. Okay, let's meet the starting fives now of both teams. And now the starting lineup for the league runners up, the Thames Valley Tigers. At four, back with the Tigers after a season with London, five foot eight point guard, Stedroy Baker. Wearing 10 at guard, the English League's top scorer for 1992, former coaches player of the year, Nigel Lloyd. Ford wearing number 11, one of the best rebounders in the English game, Mike Obaseki. Wearing 12 at forward, England international, Kevin St. Kitts. At center wearing number 13 from St. Francis College, New York, making a big impression in his first season in England, Lester James. Coach of the Thames Valley Tigers, English Coach of the Year for 1993, Mick Bett. And now meet the starting five for the newly crowned Carlsberg League champions, the Worthing Bears. Number five at forward, a great rebounding force from Dallas, Cal Patrick Wells. Wearing number six at guard, formerly with the Guildford Kings, Steve Nelson. At guard, number 10 from Fresno State University, Cleve Lewis. At forward, 
Number 14, recently voted English Player of the Year for 1993, one of the game's great talents, Colin Irish. And the player coach of a league champion, Worthing Bears, winner of seven successive league titles, Alan Cunningham. So those are the starting fives. The action comes right after this break. Hi, I'm Nigel Lloyd. Follow the Cosmo Championship on Sky Sports. The Worthing Bears, the league champions, but they've never won the Wembley final. Nor have the Thames Valley Tigers beaten last year in the final by Kingston, now Guildford. Alongside me is the coach of the Guildford Kings, Kevin Cadle. Fantastic atmosphere, Kevin. Hey, this is a great atmosphere for both teams, both organizations. This is a big day, and I'm looking for a great, great basketball game. So here we go. And the, uh, the Tigers, we think, will really run it fairly hard at Worthing right from the go. I mean, that, that would be a good offensive strategy for McBet and to go inside to try to pick up fouls. That was a great play, high, low pass in the St. Kitts from Lester James. So, Tigers in front. Here's Cleve Lewis. Irish, who was quiet for a long while against Guildford, but suddenly came good with two big three-pointers. And in the end, it's Cal Patrick Wells who levels it up. That's a big play for Cal Patrick. Yesterday, he only had two points, and he is important for their success today. He got out the blocks pretty well, and maybe if they get a big game from him, Worthy or, or Tim's Valley could have a, a lot of problems. St. Kitts. Lester James, the big man, number 13. Watch for him under the basket for those of you new to basketball he'll be under the boards and that fella there Steadway Baker won't he'll be shooting from outside and making the main plays the playmaker for Worthing has the ball now Cleve Lewis he's done a terrific job for them Cleve is a serious key to their team yesterday he started off with a couple three-pointers today came comes down hits, hits a big basket he is the key I think he's the number one key to their team if you can control Cleve that's how you beat the Worthing Bears. Stedroy Baker, just five foot eight, and they say basketball's a game for Giants. Obaseki, good move from Obaseki. Foul against Cunningham. He gets the points and he gets a chance for a three throw. And again, they went inside to Lester James, who hit Obaseki. Here he goes, Lester, high low in the Obaseki. He powers the ball up, puts it nicely into the hoop. That's the key. On the inside, you have Cunningham and you have Wells. After that, they're it. Mike Spade is out. So if they get in foul trouble, it could be a big major problem for them. And, and the difference between our game and their game is it's a matchup. It's easier for Tim's Valley to match up if Cunningham or Wells go out than it was for us yesterday. Well, no promises from Allen that he's not going to play much of the game. He was absolutely adamant about it before yesterday's game i'm not gonna play too much he said neville search will play a lot that's not what happened the tricks of cutting that happened <laughs> but they're sitting in a 3-2 zone defense so al doesn't have to do a lot of work on the defensive end so if he doesn't exert himself defensively then there's a good possibility that he can play the whole game this is out there and here's stedroy baker oh good move from cunningham and a foul there, I think, against Cal Patrick Wells. No, he got him stepping out of bounds. Cal Patrick stepped out of bounds and then stepped back in, and the referee deemed him to still be out of bounds. Mike Spade there, who misses out this game. Uh, Mike is getting ready to uh, go into the night. He has a knee operation on Tuesday. We wish him good recovery. St. Kitts from the top of the key. He needs a big game also. He had eight points yesterday. If he has a big game, that's going to be a major, major plus for Tim's Valley. Double move in. Lewis to Cal Patrick Wells. And the basket called good interference. There's Mick Bett, the coach of the year for this year, in his first year. Fantastic achievement. Hey, he did a great job. He brought his team to the next level, and that's what it's all about, taking your team to the next level, and he did that. 
Lester James. Here's Stedroy Baker. Nigel Lloyd. Well, they gave him the shot. I don't think they're going to be able to do that too much during the game to give Nigel that kind of look at the basket. You can give Steroid that kind of look, but Nigel is too good of an outside shooter to allow that to happen all game. Cleve is having one of those weekends where it bounces 50 feet up in the air and it still goes in the basket. And here it is. Nice form, nice follow through. If you have the good rotation on the ball, you have a chance for the ball to go into the basket after it hits the rim. And you've got to think it might be your night. Hey, and, and so far it's been his night. It's been a good weekend for him. I think so far he's been a key for them this weekend. Now again, they let Lloyd have the shot. And again, he missed. He's suffering it so far, but I don't know how long they can keep doing that. Cunningham, Irish. Here's Baker. Has St. Kitts and Lloyd up. Here's Nigel Lloyd, gets a foul, I think it's against Steve Nelson, doesn't yeah. get the basket. Yeah, it was a good hesitation move, he pumped, double pumped, and Steve committed, here it is, he hesitated on Steve, now Steve comes from behind, Nigel double pumps, and that's where he drew, he drew the foul at. That's one of those plays where Nigel's going in, basically thinking about trying to pick up a foul, and hopefully that he can get the basket, that was a very good basketball move. Nigel Lloyd, last season's top scorer. Barbadian, who grew up in Brooklyn. It's a great combination. And he's got some sweet moves. Hey, the New York Barbadian moves combination. <laughs> after, after this, you'll see Tim's Valley. After every free throw, they go into a press. And basically what they're trying to do is to wear Worthing down and to slow them down so that once they get on the offensive end, they only have maybe 15 seconds to get into their set offense. Cunningham, swivel turn, but not the net. His shooting percentage is never that high, Cunningham, but he makes things happen. He makes things happen, and he gives his team that little bit of oomph that they need, that little bit of toughness. And uh, today, it's all about the toughness today. You're playing two tough games, two days in a row, reaching foul on steroid. But you're playing two tough games, two days in a row, and it's about who is the toughest. Though it's about a survival thing out here today. So, sideline possession. So, Colin Irish. Cunningham. That's Cunningham's shot. Right there. He likes to try to go out further, but that is where he is very comfortable shooting right at the top of the free throw line. If he does that, he can knock that shot down all day. But he has a tendency to step a, a foot or two out, and that basically takes him out of his range of consistency. So it's Worthing by th three after an iffy start. St. Kitts. A little bit optimistic. A little bit. I mean, kind of forcing it on the inside. You want to get it in, but you want to have a little bit of patience on the outside. What they're trying to do and what they need to do against this zone defense is attack at the basket. Right now, they're attacking sideways, and you have to push the ball at the basket to push the worthy defense back. Double screen here for Irish. Not that time. And uh, here's Lester James running the ball. Baker, and here's Lloyd. St. Kitts into Obaseki. Good move. A foul against Cunningham. That's his second early on. Just five minutes gone, two fouls against Cunningham. A reaching foul, which Allen has a tendency to do. I would think that the, uh, you know, this is where it's a little bit of a problem with having Al on the floor, where right now you need to maybe get him out and give him a little bit of a blow. I mean, he is 38 years old, he plays hard, he only knows one speed, 100%. So you maybe need to give him a little blow right now. Mike Obasek. Born in Wimbledon. Very different from uh, Nigel Lloyd. Spent most of his youth in Nigeria. Great rebounder. A, a excellent leaper, has really matured this year, and has uh, learned how to shoot the free throws. That was the one thing that he lacked in this game, a consistency at the free throw line. And once he got that in, Mike was going to be more of a complete player. Yes, he really did well from the free throw line yesterday. I don't know if you saw that game. Uh, yeah, the chance to uh, watch it. I was mainly concentrating on our game. But, I mean, that's the thing I've noticed this year, that he has spent more time and, and concentrated a little bit more on the free throw line. 
Foul against Stedroy Baker. It's his second foul. Remember, five fouls in basketball, and you take no further part in the game. So they've got to watch it, because once you get on four fouls, you have to play canny. Right now, it's all about the pace of the game. And the pace of the game is definitely in Worthing's favor. All right? Right now, uh, Tim's Valley, that's better for Tim's Valley to push the ball down the floor and try to exhaust the Worthing team. Right now, they're slowing the game down, and it's basically to the advantage of Worthing team right now. Okay, foul so on Stevie in. Nelson's his second foul. Once he made the pass, he pushed off, and the referee Rob Eilert was there on the spot to pick it up. We have a substitution. The guy who was his starting point guard for most of the years back in, Paul James, for steroid Baker. Paul will look inside a little bit more, but he won't look to shoot the basketball. So basically on the offensive end, he is a guy out there that's going to be not effective. Ogaseki bursting through. Yes, Paul James, number six. Had a bad knee problem. I can't agree with that call. I think that was a very good defensive play. Um, it was a good block. Here it is. Nice comes from behind. All basketball. That's a very good defensive play. But. Yes, if you take the ball without the fingers, it should be all right. Yeah, but would they say the hand is part of the ball sometimes? <laughs> I guess on that time it wasn't, though, huh? That was a good three-on-two break. Okay. Bought it down the floor, Target, kept the please. ball in the middle of the floor, made the defense commit. He laid it off nicely to Steve Nelson. They got two free throws. On a break, you want a nice layup or you want a foul. They got, they got the two fouls out of it. Now they need the concentration at the free throw line. Steve Nelson, born and raised in Birmingham, a product of their junior development squad, and one of the best in the country. This has been a good year for Steve. He's been um, he's been very relaxed. He's taken the shots. He's learned to play within his game. And uh, once he does that, he's a uh, you know a pretty tough player. It's Worthing by two. Good hustle there by Nelson again. Cunningham comes up with it. Again, the game is too slow. For Tim's Valley, the game is too slow. They're playing right into Worthing's hands. And a good feed in from Lewis to Irish. But a foul against Colin Harris. I don't first. I don't know about that call either. <laughs> but um, hey. But my uh, Michael Hales is in doing a physical job, making Colin have to work. Colin might have got frustrated and, and pushed off a little bit. Michael Hales has the ball now, number five for the Thames Valley Tigers. Used to be with Crystal Palace. As you say, a very combative fella. Here he is, bursting through. Great Good move, feed. great move, great move. Obaseki finishes it. That was, the play was key by Michael Hales. When we said, here, lateral. All right, instead of lateral penetration, he penetrated vertically to the basket. All right, and was able to get an easy, nice layoff for Mike Obaseki. And Nelson's pass going nowhere, the other end. So, possession again. Good patch this for the Tigers. The and league runners up against the league champions. Move defensively. Alan Cunningham now goes to the top where he can rest a little bit. And they put Colin Iris down at the bottom where he's going to be more responsible for the rebound. James goes for the shot. And that's why he doesn't shoot too much. And the key to him is he. He has to make his first shot. It's a reaching foul by Michael Hales. If he makes his first shot, he'll have a tendency to look for a shot after that. But if he misses his first shot, he won't even look to shoot the rest of the game. There's a reaching foul by, uh, by Michael. And he shows referee Gordon Cole the ball just to say, I've got the ball, what's the problem? I, I didn't... Yeah, the problem was a, it was an arm that went along with it. <laughs> Give him his arm back and there's no problem. <laughs> Mickey Bedu's expression never changes. You wouldn't know if he's 30 points up or 30 points down. <laughs> it's the man of concentration. Lewis Cunningham draws a foul on Mark Scott, you are. Now you're matching, wit for wit. 
Thames Valley has jumped into a 3-2 zone. And remember, a zone is where you're responsible for area of the court. You have three outside men that are about seven, eight feet apart that are responsible for an area of the court. Nice inside pass to Steve Nelson. And you have two guys under the basket, which which were the standing, that are basically eight feet apart, which are responsible for that area under the basket. Defense a little bit. Caught napping there. Mark Scott misses with the shot. But they might have paid for that. Yeah, with the Kevin St. Kitts came in over everybody's basket. Kevin is a great athlete, a super leaper, but he was uh, jumping over everybody's back, which is disallowed. Here is uh, Tim's Valley in that pressure defense, basically just to slow Worthing down to make them have to work a little bit. Irish goes for three and gets it. Good shot, good assist by Allen. He drew the defenders. Colin was open. He made the pass to him, and Collins put it. Colin put it smoothly into the basket. Here's Scott into Obaseki. Obaseki makes it. Obaseki up to 10. He's the leading point scorer in the game so far, Mike Obaseki. Here it is, Mike putting up, putting it nicely into the hoop. Mike has come to play today. The ball is going inside to him. They're delivering the ball, and he's coming up with the results. That's the thing is when you put the ball into the big man, you, your major thing is come up with some results. You're two, you're three feet away from the basket. If he can be effective, that's going to push the worthy defense back and it's going to open it up for Nigel Lloyd on the outside. Cunningham. Oh, yes, the Harlem Globetrotter. Hey, and he tricked him. Al's a big game player, and he knows what he has to do here. Left-handed from the old school of moves. Nice move, Mr. Cunningham. He's up to four. Worthing back in front by three. Here's Obaseki going nowhere and traveling. And Colin Irish just shrugs him away. <laughs> Obaseki was out of position. There is no way he belongs at the top of the key. That is way out of the skill level. He's an inside player. He really can't make a pass. He can't make a shot from out there. He needs to be inside. Timeout called by the Worthing coach, Alan Cunningham. His team leads 17 14, 11 minutes and 8 seconds to go. First half. It's good start. Good start. There's no point. Us, you know, I don't mind you talking to the referees. Let's stop talking to each other. Hey, listen, there's no point doing things we can't do. On that motion, they're playing out on this wing pass. See, whoever's setting that screen down has got to roll. That was you that time. All right, let's start running what we know better. Let's go back to two. Put Nick on there. All right. Let's take a break. Yeah. So he's a little bit upset. They're trying on things that... Uh, they're not quite capable of. Just like the over second play, right, 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 that right, right, caused the timeout to be called. He's basically telling the guys, let's stay with what we're familiar with. Don't get to the big game and all of a sudden want to try to change things and do it your way. Let's do it the way we've been doing it all year. That is what has got us this far, so this to this distance so far. And Alan Cunningham still got some breath in those lines, which is uh, a little bit surprising. Here's the last basket. Nice jab move by Cunningham, puts it up left hand, lets the younger kids know that are looking to be a basketball player. Alan Cunningham is right-handed. You have to be able to use both your left hand and your right hand if you're going to be a successful basketball player. Nine minutes gone, first half. It's Worthing, the league champions, leading the runners-up, the Thames Valley Tigers by three. Here's Cleve Lewis. Double screen coming up for Colin Irish. And he goes to Nelson. Cal Patrick Wells back in, yes, and into great effect. It's two, but it was very nearly three. But more importantly, the lead's up to six now. It leads up to six and the pace of the game. They have Nick Cook in the game who gives them a little bit of outside shooting, but the pace of the game is definitely in the... Hey, that's Mr. Cook. Yes, straight in. Came in and delivered. And in, in, in zone defense, you need to have somebody in there that can shoot the basketball, and that's what Nick can do. He was a starter in the semi-final against the London Towers. Not chosen here, they went for Stead Roy Baker. But he's fresh, and as you can see, he's hot. Here's Lester James. Oh, yes, good rejection there from Cal Patrick Wells. Good defensive play. There's good hustle. And what you have now, there's 10 minutes left in the game. Here we go, Nigel Lloyd, nice three-on-two break. Goes in, Lester James puts it up, blocked by Kilpatrick Wells. Good job. Worthing on a hot streak, Irish, Cunningham, oh, yes! Yes, yes, yes! Them old bowls of Cunningham, that was a great pass from Irish. 
Nice little lob pass, Cunningham controlled it, put the ball in the basket. But what you have here, nine minutes, nine and a half minutes to go in the half, Kevin St. Kitts from long range, good three-pointer. Worthing has not made a substitution yet. And Tim Valley, everybody on their team has had an opportunity to get a rest. Here's Nelson. Colin Irish. Trying again. Obaseki just gives it to Cleve Lewis. Here's Cunningham again. Not that time. And Lloyd brings it down court. A one point game. Nine minutes to go, first half. And they could go ahead here. St. Kitts just misses out. Wells to Irish. And Stevie Nelson's gone down with clutching his foot. Didn't see what happened. Uh, no, he might have just twisted his ankle a little bit. If he's out for any extended period of time, that's a big problem for the way. He might just have a cramp. Yeah, I think he probably just has a cramp in his leg. He's okay. Yeah, he's okay. That's a relief, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely so. Looks like Steve's going to be okay. But they can't afford to get in foul trouble. They can't afford to get people injured. It's it's on a knife edge all the time. Hey, hey, they're definitely on the uh, on the edge. And this is the first substitution. Colin Irish, the first substitution. Mark Hubbard coming in. Now, Tim Valley has to play man-to-man -man defense because this guy Hubbard can shoot the basketball. Yes, he sure can. Yesterday in the semifinal, shot a three-pointer with his first touch. Yeah, that was a backbreaker too. That was the only basket Mark made. He really was in and out the game. But he is the, uh, you know, a nice guy to have as a six-man because he can come in and get you a lot of points in a hurry. He's number 11 for Worthing. And in uh, Kevin's team, Kevin, of course, we said, England, Great Britain coach, he's in the team for the European playoffs, trying to get into those finals. Hubbard, there he is. He's done it again. Only a two-pointer that time. Oh, automatic. <laughs> you know, nice penetration by Cunningham. You know, he knew the shooter was out there, and he got him the basketball. And that's why he's in your squad. Hey, he can shoot the basketball. And we need Stop. shooters. Shooters, you always find a place for a shooter on your team. Mr. Cook. Three by three. He says, no longer. Three pointers. Hey, I can shoot two, Hubbard. <laughs> Maybe he's making up for you, Kevin. Hey, hey. <laughs> 23 apiece. Six minutes left. Alan Cunningham. Flat as a pancake, but it went in. Hey, it went in. And Cunningham is playing. Allen is the kind of guy, he can almost be falling out. But you know this is a big game. Allen's going to be out there, and he's going to play to the bitter end and give it all he has, that all he's got to give. Eight points. Game time. Let's 55%. That's a, that's a good percentage for him. Hey, that's a good percentage for anybody. Michael Jordan would take 55%. Cook. Oh, yes, it's Wells again with the rejection. I think it's time. With Cook in there, it'd be a great move to get Obaseki back in the game because now the, the Thames Valley defense is starting to extend out. Here it is, Cook. He pumps. Kip Patrick Wells says, don't even think about it in here. Lester James. And they've got possession again. Cunningham doesn't quite agree. Here it is. Michael, hey, uh, Michael Obasecki back in the game for Mark Scott. And what that does is now that's going to push the defense back and it's going to make it available for Cook and Nigel Lloyd to be able to spot up for jumpers now. Lloyd, here's Cook and a foul off the ball against Mark Hubbard. I'm counting, I'm counting. Blue, 11, off the ball. Off the ball, Mark Hubbard commits the offense. Mark Hubbard, the foul, which is first. Listen to what I say, listen. Down by two, Cook for goes for three, misses that Doesn't time. Again, the rejection, or the rebound from Cal Patrick Wells. And here's Cunningham. Good give and go, veteran move. Cunningham came down. 
passed it to Hubbard, didn't stand, cut directly to the basket. Hubbard just passed just a little bit behind him. If he would have got the ball a little bit in front of him, it would have been a good basket for Cunningham. Now Worthen is finally realizing that they need to start substituting. Alan Cunningham, who plays then the first 13 minutes of the match. Nelson back in. Here he goes, straight away for three. Cal Patrick Wells misses out, but Cleve Lewis doesn't. He does so many things, Cleve. Hey, Cleve is a great all-around player. He's the number one versatile player in the league, and he can do so many things. He can rebound for you, he can lead the attack, he can hit the jumper. I mean, he's the kind of guy that is perfect for the Worthing lineup. Worthing lead by four. Just under seven minutes to go in the first half. Nigel Loy. Time after time for the Tigers has been the man in the crucial situation. Time out called by the Worthing Bears coach, Alan Cunningham. His team lead, 27-23, 6.38 to go. We'll take a break. Welcome back. You're watching the final of the Wembley Carlsberg Championship. Worthing leading Thames Valley Tigers by four, and uh, their shooting percentage a lot, lot better. Look at the two points. Sir. Hey, Worthing is doing a great job. They're doing a great job on the defensive end, where they slowed the game down and made Thames Valley play at their pace. Whistle's gone before Lewis made his cut to the basket. Ball must have been out of bounds. So Irish with the inbounds. Stevie Nelson has Lloyd in front of him. Hubbard goes for three points and makes it. This is a big spell for Worthing. They're seven in front. And great penetration by Steve Nelson. And Hubbard spotted up. Here it is, penetration. Hubbard did what you'd call fan. Now, Nick Cook, if he's guarding the shooter, you cannot afford to leave the shooter. You are not a help man. And another interception. This it's is Hubbard again. It's Hubbard, as you say, from the there other corner. Is. Doesn't matter where you put him, he's lethal from the perimeter. Hey, and the thing is, the guys on his team know we're pushing the ball down the floor. We're looking for Hubbard spotting up because we know we have a very good chance of getting the basket if we can get the ball to him. Hubbard on to seven. Worthing lead by nine. Five minutes 40 left in the first half. And the Tigers have got to start scoring on offense because it's going bad for them at both ends of the court. They're doing a good job defensively. Worthing is doing an excellent job on the defensive end. And in the big games, it's about defense. That's Trevor Gordon. Hey, with his wolves on. <laughs> <laughs> with a crunch on his back. <laughs> Great entertainer. That's the uh, entertainer from the Minnesota Timberwolves. That's the wolves on his back. And an amazing use of a trampoline and a basketball. Hey, he's very athletic. And uh, he's a very well-paid mascot over there with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Thames Valley now on 17 fouls, which means that if they commit any foul defensively anywhere on the court, Worthing can go for a one-on-one. -on -one. Nelson looks to shoot. It's Lewis who gets the shot in, and they're burying Thames Valley at the moment. This has to stop, otherwise they're going down. And right now, Timbers Valley has no oomph in their attack from anybody. Right now, the only guy who's producing on the offensive end is Mike Obersecki. No one else has added to the attack today whatsoever. And if they're going to be successful in the big games, you need other players to show up. Oralaja is new on Eddie Oralaja. Yes, Nigel Lloyd's the guy they've got to be looking for. He's the guy who makes things happen. Yeah, I mean, in yesterday's game, you have Nigel Lloyd. Here it is, pass in to Lester James, fouled by Colin Iris reaching in. But in yesterday's game, you had Nigel Lloyd with 26 points, Mike Obasecki with 20 points, and Lester James with 20. Lester and Nigel have not contributed today so far. Thus, they're in a 12-point deficit. Both teams now on 17 fouls, so one-on-ones. Nigel Lloyd goes, doesn't get the chance, a lucky rebound. Oh, look at that, that's Mike Obasecki. Over second, under the basket, you knew it, you saw it coming. That was a good, a good assist. Here's 
Open, uh, Mike picks it up. Mike going up, slams it in. That was a good play by Nigel Lloyd. He followed the shot and delivered the ball in there to over second. So it's 10 points. The deficit now. Looks like Irish fouled as he goes to the basket. Foul is called on Nigel Lloyd. Lloyd. It's his second Eight, foul. Two. Two. Tim's Valley needs somebody to ignite a spark in him. Right now, the they're Look for the board very the flat. Worthing is very hungry. And Worthing is playing very confident, confident basketball. Yes, and this is a team who've never got to the Wembley final before, but they've got players who have. Yeah, yeah, and that's the whole thing is, it's about getting the, you know, players who know what it's all about. They have Steve Nelson, uh, Irish, Cunningham, Spain, uh, Hubbard. These guys know what it's about. Kilpatrick, these guys, the six guys that they have, they know what it takes to be successful. Kevin St. Kitts breaking through. The basket good, that's a big play. It's a big play, but... But now they go to the other end, and Colin Iris has two shots because they're in one and one, so they can just even that play right out. Yes. Good Charge, replay. Charging foul call. Yeah. Irish's feet were planted. Good position. Good call by the referee, Colin, in that position. Uh, St. Kitts went up, put the ball into the basket. We have a 10 point game. He just put it down to 10. Colin can put it back to where it was, back at 12 points. Wow. Four minutes to go in the half. And again, it's about momentum going in at halftime. Whichever team has the momentum, that's what you're looking for at this place now. Basketball is a game of runs, and you're looking for whoever has the run going in at halftime. You want your team to have that run, to have a good feeling going in at halftime, regardless of what the score is. Irish up to seven. And the lead, as you say, back to 12. And here's the man who's got to change it around. He's got to start creating something. That's where they got to go with it. Again, it's Cal Patrick Wells with the rejection. Cleve Lewis over Oralaja. Rebound, Kevin St. Kitts. Now, this is a bit more pace about them, but even, th even now, it's not quite quick enough. Good hands from Cleve Lewis. Cleve looks like he needs a little blow there, but... Uh... You know, here's Cunningham. It's time for him to come back in. I think you see that Cleve might need a little blow to give him a nice little break. Cal Patrick Wells goes for three. He's up to nine. Hey, the bank is open on Sunday, says Kill Patrick. That's when you know things are not going your way when he shoots a 50-footer and it banks in off the backboard. <laughs> Timeout called by the Thames Valley Tigers coach, Mickey Bett. Not surprisingly, Worthing now have a 15-point lead. Here's the rejection. Kilpatrick has come to play. Lester James wanted a foul on, I mean, wanted a goaltending on that, but that was clearly a good block. 3.08 left. They trail 27 to 42. Here's Mickey Bett. We gotta be looking for him. Now Kevin's on the two. Let's put Lester on the two, on the high post, Lester. All right, we got Kevin, Mike O. Fake down, come up. All right, they're playing two down there and they're matching up outside. That's their problem. There's the hole in there. So you go fake down, come up. All right? Come on, we've got to get the ball inside. That's the problem. Let's go, defense. One, yeah, two, three, three. early in the game, they were getting the ball inside to Obaseki. They were not able to stop Obaseki as the game has gone on. They've taken away the inside play. I think, I mean, that was a good timeout. You have a timeout geared towards what your team needs, but I think his team right now needs a little bit more motivational kind of timeout because they're just out here, they're playing dead basketball. Yes, you talk about momentum, it's more like a landslide at the moment. On the ball, Obaseki keeps it alive. Or a larger, and the tip goes to Stevie Nelson. Hey, great defense. Now, like I said many times to my team, Offense will win your games, but defense is what wins your championships. And right now, the Worthing team is playing defensive championship basketball. Irish. Can't keep it from going in bounds. A little bit of frustration building. You can see that's the commitment. He's 15 points in front, but a little thing like that upsets him. 
Hey, he knows. I mean, Colin is uh, is playing. He's playing hard. He wants everything to go right and everything to go correct, for, forgetting what the lead is. Because, I mean, he's a veteran, and he knows it's about momentum going in at halftime. And right now, they have Tim's Valley down the way they need to have him down. And there's a sort of static look, as you can see them come down court here, still working it out. They've got to get charged up. Nigel Lloyd. Looking for that inside move, James. Obaseki, spoiled by Nelson. Hubbard gives it to Lewis. Hubbard wide to the right. Here's Hubbard again. Good ball in. Obaseki, a good tip, but it's Irish again. They didn't really have any right to get that ball. Good control. It's like one of these things. It becomes a landslide where everything starts to go your way, no matter what. You know, even though he didn't have a right to, but he uh, it's, it's just a landslide going on. Offensive rebound. So here's Kevin St. Kitts rounds Nelson. Sticks it in. Good job. He pushed the ball down the floor, took it one on one, decided he had his mind made up that he was going to get a basket. And the amazing thing in this game, the pace of the game. Worthy is doing more running with their six players than what Tim Valley is, and they've used a lot of their bench. Yeah. Boom. Oh, what? Boom. In your face. He makes Lester James is all over him. He makes the impossible seem possible. <laughs> Here it is. All over him. Pulls up. Take that, Lester. Irish up to nine. Here's Michael Hales. Nigel Lloyd in. Good ball in. Lester James. But again, he can't make it. That was Cleve Lewis under the basket. That's foul on Harper. He banged and uh, banged into Lester. Um, Cleve, that was good, a good defensive play. The thing with Worthing too, by being in the zone defense, they have very few fouls. So Tim's Valley has not had opportunity to go to the free throw line and get them some three points, which is the difference. Nigel Lloyd gets three. That's the guy there. Nigel to the three. And it's about momentum going, and here it is. Puts the ball up nicely, sweetly into the hoop. He hit a three. They could use maybe four, two or four more points going into halftime. That would give them a nice little momentum, nice something to talk about. I know points are not everything, but that makes Nigel's tally for the half. Only four points. They would be expecting more from him. Hey, yeah. I mean, he is the number one point man for him. So they're looking for point production from him. Wells goes for three, misses out, and here's a little bit of a late rally here for the Tigers, and as you say, so badly needed. Nigel Lloyd, it is again, so five points for Nigel in 30 seconds. Hey, and that was a great move, too. He slowed his pace, read the defense, the defense took the timing away from the defense for the block, and leaped right over both Wells and... Here comes Cunningham bringing it down. But the lead's back to 10. Time for a couple more shots. This This should be the last offense of the game. Mickey Beck getting his team back in it. But it's going to be a long, long haul. I think they're doing okay. I mean, they had a very bad half. They don't have the oomph in their attack. They're down maybe by 10 at halftime. Could be possibly 12 or 8, depending on what happens in the next 22 seconds. So I think he has to be satisfied that his team hung in there even though a lot of things are not going their way. Cunningham misses from the line. So, they can run this right down, but they're intent on really running it quickly. Hales goes for three, Lester James misses out. Irish. It's sideline possession to Worthing. I have to question that shot by Michael Hales. It's 22 seconds ago, you have to play for the last shot. The most you go out of here is by 10, maybe seven or eight. Now you get worthy the chance to make a basket and get in with the momentum at halftime. But there it is. The halftime buzzer goes. And I think, as you say, it was so one-sided that half, in a way, Thames Valley Tigers needn't be too dismayed because they're only 10 now. Hey, basketball is a game of two halves. It's just down by 10. It's important. The first three minutes of the second half is going to be important. If they come out and they can maybe chip one or two baskets away from this lead, then we're looking at a serious ball game down the stretch. Right then.
We're going to take a break now. Coming back with the second half. Thames Valley at half time, 34. The league champions, Worthing, 44. Alan Cunningham leads his troops out for the second half. The first half, they comfortably controlled, but can they carry it through? 44-34. They're on the verge of their first ever Wembley title. And as Kevin said, these next three, four minutes are going to be absolutely crucial. Very crucial. Depends on the attitude of the Thames Valley players. If they come out with a hungry look, they have a chance to get back in this game and they have a chance to win this game. If they come out lackadaisical and not knowing where they're going, it's going to be a long second half for them. Irish feeds Cunningham and immediately the lead's up to 12. Good play. It's a good tip. Irish with his head up, found Cunningham for a nice layup, put the ball in the bucket, gives him a nice 12-point lead. They start the game off with a half off with a nice little cushion there. Interesting that Nick Cook is in the uh, starting lineup in the second half. They need outside points from him. They need somebody to open up the inside game, and that's what Nick does. By him being, at, being able to shoot the ball from the outside, good play, good play. Another give and go. It was a shorter version of a give and go, but Kilpatrick pass, moved to the basket. The pass was delivered back to him for a nice hoop. And no one on him. So they're up to 14 the lead, and it could be more. Good hustle again from Worthing. Stevie Nelson has Cleve Lewis there. But Nick Cook gets the interception. Nigel Lloyd. Cook with so much time, but doesn't make it that time. So there's the uh, stats on the first half. And Worthing have kept their domination from outside. Everything is in their favor. Every single statistical thing in this game is in their favor. Nigel Lloyd goes for two. They still have not come with that oomph yet that they need to have to give them opportunity to take this game over. They're still playing very passive basketball. Nice double pump dunk by Nigel. Maybe something to maybe uh, to get them going. But right now, they're still playing pretty flat basketball. 26 points he scored yesterday against London. Only eight so far. Nearly two minutes gone, second half. Cleve Lewis into Irish, Cunningham. And somehow it wobbles its way in. Hey, was just saying, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> and that's what that was right there. Cunningham, he smells a championship. All right, Allen knows what it takes to win the championship game. And if he can get worthy another five minutes in this half, good shot by Nick Cook. If he can get worthy another solid five minutes in this half, they will be looking good. Plus, I mean, anything else he gives them is a bonus. Nick Cook's three-pointer puts him on nine, cuts the lead to 11. His Irish. Good fake, cuts inside to Cunningham. Pity, that was a lovely move from Colin Irish. Good look, Colin went up to shoot. All the defensive players turned. He looked up to shoot, turned to the basket. Cleve, another give and go. Worthing does that extremely well. When they make a pass, the guy is always cutting to the basket. Thus, it gives the shooter another opportunity. If he doesn't have a good shot, he can always make the pass for an easier shot for a man cutting to the hoop. Three fouls now on Nigel Lloyd. Three also on Kevin St. Kitts. They've got to be careful. Very careful, very careful. This guy right here is doing a fantastic job. Cleve Lewis is having a great basketball game. He's leading them. He's doing the things that he needs to do. And thus, the reason why they have an 11-point lead right now. Another from the West Indies. He was born in Jamaica. His first season at Worthing. And what a season it's been. He's up to 11. It's still, it's still anybody's ball game. I mean, there's uh, 17 and a half minutes to go. Get a couple three-pointers here. What, what the Thames Valley need is a couple solid defensive plays. Right now, they're not holding them down on the defensive end, and they need to keep their big men on the inside. Get the big guys in there on the inside doing what they That's it right there. That's it. That's exactly it. That's it. Good Mark's pass gone. by Nigel. Plus, they can set, once they score, they then can set up their press defense, which can wear on Worthing as the game goes on. If they don't score, they can't set it up. And if they get it inside, 
The defense crowds in and they can get some outside. Shots. Plus they can get some fouls and the more they get it inside, the more you wear the Worthing players down. And right now they're not wearing the Worthing players down. Nelson. Gets a foul, and it's a foul against Nigel Lloyd. It's Lloyd's fourth. Four fouls on Lloyd now with him. Now with just one more to go, otherwise he's out of the game. This is a critical period. You'll see, it's 16.50 to go in the half. You will see if Nigel is a veteran or not. Here it is, it's a possible charge, but Nigel was not positioned. You'll see if he's a veteran or not, if he can play the next 17 minutes basically with four fouls. They need to have him on the floor. They gotta have him on the floor if they have a chance of winning this game. And it's easier for guards to play with four fouls against you than it is for centers. But it's a little bit tougher because of the team that Worthing has. He'll be checking a guard like Cleve Lewis or Steve Nelson who can post up. And if he can't defend him in the post, there's a possibility that they'll score on him every time or there's a possibility that he might foul somebody. Hales goes for it. And this drunk stuff from Lester James and the foul drawn against Stevie Nelson. Lester James, a key to their team. If Lester is producing, Tim's Valley is in good shape. Right now, he has been Mr. Invisible. Hopefully the second half, for their sake, that he comes in that can give him some offensive production and some defensive rebound production. Stevie Nelson, what a revelation he's been in these finals. Hey, Steve is doing a good job. He had a couple key shots yesterday to really break our back. Um, he's hit a bunch of key shots during the season. He's playing very confident, very relaxed basketball. Well, that, believe it or not, is Lester James' first point of the match. Ooh, when, when they played in the, in the league, I'd said about Lester James, if he scores 20 points, then Tim's Valley wins. Tonight, you got two points from your other postman who was the lead scorer for you yesterday. You know, he's got to come a little bit better than that in the big game. Look at the press on here. Can they get over it. Here's Nelson. More energized now, though, the Tigers. Yeah, 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 much more so. Much more so. Good play. That's good defensive play by Mark Scott. He moved his feet. Took away the, the baseline away from Cunningham. Cunningham lost the basketball. They can get a bucket here. This is going to ignite the, their team and it's going to ignite the crowd. Spectacular reactions from Cunningham. He's still got some strength in his legs. This stage of the game, Nigel has that's the play we're talking about right there. Good play by Lester. Good rebound by Lester. It's a jump ball, although I thought Lester James had it, to be fair to him. He definitely had the basketball. I don't know how you come up with a jump ball out of that one. But he definitely, Lester did a good job. And where I talked about Nigel, you see how easily Cleve got to the basket? Nigel is really not playing defense on him now. So Cleve needs to look to be an offensive player. He needs to look to try to score every time down and force Nigel to play defense or to draw a foul. Nelson, here's Irish. Rebound from Nick Cook. And here's Nigel Lloyd. Cook. Lloyd again. Nick Cook, Cook that's his shot. Oh, now there's a surprise. That's even better. Don't settle for that. Now it's a seven point game with 15 minutes to go. Things are looking pretty good for the Valley. Different complexion. 40 points down to seven in the last three minutes. Cunningham. And always we've got to be aware of this fatigue factor. Oh, that's a heck of a foul there from Lester James. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that I'm, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure. Nice fake up. Good foul. That's hey, I mean, it's an aggressive foul, but it was a clean play. It was a clean play. It was no reaction from Steve Wells, Nelson. You know it's, that's part of the game sometimes. Who said it was a non-contact score? Hey, it is a non-contact. <laughs> Only when they don't make contact. We're just seeing things. That's right. <laughs> right, to the line then. Mr. Cool. Mick Bet there with the same composure. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is where you see short shots starting to fall a little short. Players getting a little bit tired. They're starting to lose their concentration. 
eight-point game still. Still, the Valley is still in it. Nigel Lloyd. Keep saying it, but watch out for him. The clutch has been there all the time when they need it. In all the crucial games, Nigel Lloyd's come good. James misses once more. Lloyd. Ten, please. Yes, I think when the ten went up, <laughs> yeah. Nigel Lloyd thought it just possibly could be him. Yeah, no, Cleve grabbed him on the uh, on the on on the fake. That was a good play by Nigel. He stayed in there, got the rebound. Hey, it's a lot more aggressive Thames Valley team right now than what they were in the first half, and it's mainly due to Leicester. Leicester has woke woke up in the second half and they needed him. Maybe somebody gave him a speech at halftime telling him that they needed him. Good penetration. Good penetration. Now the difference is. They're drawing fouls, where in the first half, Tim Valley very rarely got to the free throw line. Now they're going to the basket, they're picking up fouls. That's the fourth foul on Steve Nelson. Right, one more, and he's out, so in comes Hubbard. But the uh, the bad news is that Worthing's bench, which hasn't fired too well some games this season, is firing pretty well when required. Mark Hubbard. Penetrations. Straight penetrations, not going to the side, going at the basket. Penetrations, opening things up for him. Nigel Lloyd it was. He's up to 10. But Mark Hubbard on, and they've got to watch out for his outside threat. Here they go. Here's Cook. Good job. Good oh. job. That's a good job on Cook. Cal Patrick Wells makes absolutely sure that Cook knew he was there. Hey, here it is. Nice still. Nigel Lloyd from behind. Now he has his head up. Automatic, get your head up. Cook going to the basket, worrying about Kilpatrick, but he drew the foul, which was a key. And it forced a timeout. So a timeout called. I guess it's by Alan Cunningham. And it's Worthing leading, but now only by six. It's 53-47. Give me a coffee in Danish. You got it. Hey, Norma. I know, I know. Coffee, when Danish. You got a problem? Yeah. Hold the coffee. selected and prepared with the vitamins and minerals he needs every day. Caesar, to love him like he loves you. Think about how you'll spend your life. 24.5 years sleeping. 3.1 years eating. 1.7 years at weddings. 3.2 years listening to boring lectures. Dung beetle. Which leaves 5.5. Right. You're up. A lot happier about things now. Yeah, yeah and he's a little bit more intense in his timeout. One of the keys as a coach, you have to be an actor at the same time. Sometimes you got to fake like you're mad. Sometimes you have to fake like you're happy and that you're relaxed just to get your team in the right kind of atmosphere that they need to be in. And that was a good timeout. He got these guys that are thinking, they're starting to believe that they can win. Where worthy. They're starting to get a little bit tired. They're starting to get a little bit careless. And they're broken down on the defensive end. That's the major thing that kept the leaders, that they broke down on the defensive end. I don't know about being an actor. You also have to be a bit of a singer as a coach. I heard you were a bit of a star last night. What was it? I heard it through the grapevine. Hey, apparently, hey. It, was le it was legendary, apparently, on the karaoke. Hey, hey, I have a second career. I'm getting ready to quit coaching. And Marvin Gaye, watch out. I'm taking all his copyrights. <laughs> apparently, you had to be there. OK. Here's Nick Cook. He's on nine, now in the double figures. Nick, whose uh, sister Louise played for Northampton in the ladies' final. So very much a basketball family. 
but a sure touch. Sure touch. And the lead's down to four, Kevin. Down to four. And the game that we saw on Sky Sport with these two teams, Tim's Valley started off with Nick Cook. Good play. They got a three-on-one, four-on-one break. They got to come up with a basket here. Good job. Nigel Lloyd it is. Lloyd coming to play now. Up to 12 points, but more importantly, they trail only by two. Good team basketball. Cook brought the man to him. Michael Hales and made the play. Good team basketball. Cunningham. A foul, a charging foul given against Cunningham. No basket and a charging foul. Seven, now watch for Cunningham's blue. reaction. Seven, <laughs> See, set. Lester set. Good, good, that's a good call. He said his body was basically set. That's a good, good call. Referee took the basket away. Good job. Good job. But Cunningham, he took the ball to him, and that's one of the few times in the press that they really attacked Tim Valley. Because what they come down to do is they take, they use up time on the shot clock, and they don't have a lot of time on the clock to score buckets. Nigel Lloyd with Hubbard in close attempts. Now what you have, boxing one on the wrong man. Boxing one on Nigel Lloyd, and that leaves Nick Cook wide open. And he's the one who was putting them back in the game. Nick Cook up to 14 points now. And it's a one-point ball game. Irish, Cunningham. Cleve Lewis, desperate stuff. Oh. Rejection, Lester James is Lloyd again. No! <laughs> Two points and a free throw. <laughs> nice. They're Shook in, him up. They're in front. <laughs> Clean, good drop, good block, good block by Lester James. Led to a nice break. Shake and bait by Nigel Lloyd. Nice off the backboard. In front. The, for the first time since I think the first couple of minutes. Hey, basketball is a game of momentum and runs. And right now, the Valley is having their run. They're doing a very good job. They've kept the concentration. They came out and they made a nice little run to start the second half off. And he looks just as worried now as he was when they were trailing by 14. Mickey yeah, Beck. and the thing is, Cunningham, he only played about eight or nine minutes in the first half. He was very tired. And when he went to the bench, that's when they took the lead. He was able to sit on the bench and coach a little bit more. Now he has to continue to play. His shots are falling short. The last two shots he's taken have fallen short. Nick Cook. Cunningham, it's called interference. Basketball called good. Interference not allowed to touch the ball above the rim, and that's exactly what Cunningham did. And it hit the backboard. So once the ball hits the backboard, it's live, and he touched the ball once it hit the backboard. But we said they weren't too fired up in Thames Valley in the first half. But they certainly are in the second. Yeah, they've uh, the whole bench, the bench is into the game. The first half, the bench was sitting there very quiet and calm. It's amazing. Now you look at the Worthing bench, they're really quiet, they're really sitting back. There's a couple guys on Worthing that need blows right now. You got a guy, Steve Nelson, with six fouls, is looking to come back into the game. Up three. Cleve Lewis misses, and here's Lester James. Hales. That's good penetration, making them have to work on a defensive end. Penetration, you're going to make them have to work a little bit, and it makes it a little bit more difficult on the offensive end when it's time for them to score. Lester James. Hey, that was a good crossover move by Lester. Nice, quick front turn move, crossover, took the ball to kill Patrick, threw the foul. They can maybe take this up to a five-point lead. Second foul against Cal Patrick Wells. It means that Worthing now have had seven fouls. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one for the Thames Valley Tigers. Every other foul. With 12 minutes to go in the game, they're in one-on-one. -on -one. This is a completely different team. In the first half, Worthing of uh, that had very few fouls. Tim Valley got to the free throw line a uh, very few times. The second half, a difference. Worthing is picking up a lot of fouls, and a lot of fouls they're picking up is because they're tired and they're not able to move their feet. It's 
asking a lot to play two games back to back with such tension. Yeah, with such tension and with only six players. And with not somebody there you, on their bench who's doing a lot of substitution where guys can get ample rest. You got guys playing 13, 14 minutes in a row. It, uh, it basically is, it becomes detrimental to them. Irish goes for three. Wells inside, but now all the inside stuff's going Thames Valley's way. Although the ball's given an out of bounds to Worthing there. I must say that's not how we saw it, but we're somewhere away. The game is a lot of shots, tired shots by the Worthing players. They're shooting three pointers, they're getting tired, the ball is falling short, a lot of rebounds, a lot of things that were going their way in the first half. Second half, they're kind of struggling a little bit. Irish. Good bucket by Colin Iris. Tempest composure, nice fake, put the ball smoothly into the basket. 11 points for Irish, but only three in the second half. A foul there against Cunningham. Pushed away by Patrick Wells. <laughs> it was a foul. He was about four on Al. You got four on Nelson. Um, you got Obaseki going to the free throw line. If he can get two, this would be a great thing for him. But he's got, he basically, he did what he needed to do. He drew a foul on someone on the inside. And right now, anything else he can do at the free throw line is a bonus. Four fouls on Nelson. Four on Cunningham. Obaseki gets the first. Hey, that was a pretty looking shot. Nice, smooth, relaxed, took three dribbles, put the ball nicely into the basket. Here it goes nice and relaxed again. And Worthing get the rebound. Here's Nelson sending Cleve Lewis away. A lot of hustle under the basket. Lewis. Cutting him robbed by Michael Hales. And here comes Lloyd again. And a foul away from the basket on Mike Obaseki. Hey, that was a veteran move by Alan Cunningham. Obaseki came in his area. Alan Cunningham made body contact with him. As soon as Mike got there, he fell down, drew a foul. Here it is, back right into him. Al, Al fell down, drew a foul. So there's the... The foul trouble, three of them on four, two of them for Worthing, key ones too, Cunningham and Nelson, of course Lloyd. There's the post up. There's the post up. What Nigel has to do is any guys that get in the post area, he just needs the front and ask for over top help. If he plays behind the guy, he has a chance of picking up a foul or they're going to be able to pick up an easy basket. You gotta love this. This is what it's all about. Championship game, two points with 10 minutes to go. You gotta love it out there, baby. You gotta love it. Cleve Lewis is probably loving it a little less than he was a few minutes ago when it all looked to be going their way. It's gonna be hard work now. And the Worthing fans, as you can see, can hardly bear to look. It's a very, very different game. But that makes it down to one. Because Worthing, they aren't using their substitutions. They have 10 and a half minutes to go. It's time for them to look for situations where they can use the timeouts, where they can get breaks by using their timeouts. Uncle Hales. Monster pass in, but uh, the tip away. And it's still sideline possession for the Tigers. St. Kitts. St. Kitts. Tip from Lester James. Good hustle from Lester James. Somebody gave him a wake-up call at halftime. Because Lester is a completely different player out here in the second half than what he was in the first half. Nelson. Lewis through. And there's James again coming up with it. Three on two fast break. And now he's the guard. But a travel. That's one of those situations where Nides maybe has to come down and get the ball from Lester. Maybe they don't take advantage of a break, but they still have the basketball. Still a great game of basketball. You gotta love it. 
very competitive. Both teams are awake and alive, and we're looking at a great basketball game here. Lewis, Cunningham, not much on now. Look at the, the defense from Thames Valley. They're all over. Good play, Irish. Good draw of a foul. Good draw. Should be three shots here. Foul is on Michael Hales. It's his third. Three shots. It is three shots. Three shots because it was outside the perimeter. And Irish faked Hales up. He knew, it's here he is, three, nice three fake, shots. faked him up. He knew he was going to come down on him. Just threw a desperation shot up. If it goes in, it's a bonus. But he knew he was guaranteed three free throws. And if he makes them, we have a tied basketball game here. Irish has been right around the country. Began playing with Warrington, Manchester United, Portsmouth. Was with you last year. And searching for another championship. Must have a good-looking sideboard with all those trophies. Hey, a lot of trophies, a lot of medals. He's been good for the programs that he's, that he's, uh, that he's been in. Nigel giving him a few words of wisdom. <laughs> Irish, great character. And even in the uh, cauldron here, able to smile. And then still, they're within one. Hey, with nine and a half minutes to go. We have a basketball game here, fans. Nigel Lloyd. Playing well with his four fouls against him. Hales. But the, the tip away is it from Irish. Michael Hales is doing a very good job. When he gets the basketball against his own defense, he's looking to penetrate. He's taking the ball to the basket, looking to maybe get a layup, draw a foul, or lay the ball into the inside to big inside people. Lloyd over Nelson. Not that time. Obaseki fouled. I think it was by Lewis. Lewis it was. That's his second. Second half. Difference. The rebound has swung tremendously. Tim's Valley getting a bunch of offensive rebounds, not allowing any second shots. They have controlled the backboard, and the backboards are part of a defensive series, and they've taken the game over. Michael Hales is going out. They're bringing Nick Cook in, which is going to give him a little bit of a push on the offensive end. Right now, they've been stagnant the last couple minutes on the offense. They bring in Mr. Instant Offense in and Nick Cook. <laughs> Youngsters watching this, you're shooting free throws. You want to stay on the free throw line as you shoot the ball. Stay on the free throw line and get your follow through. As you shoot the shot, if you back away, the ball is going to have a tendency to fall short. So you want to stay on the line, follow through on your shot, keep your concentration until the ball goes in the basket. Kevin St. Kitts goes to the line. The leading floor shooter in the league. Cunningham and Nelson. Nelson again. Here it is. The 15 seconds to go for them to get in their set offense. All right, the press is, is working extremely well. Good hustle from Irish. Good job, Irish. Good hustle. Keep, kept the ball alive. His teammate was able to pick the ball up. Lewis with so much time. Not his best shot. Hey, it's getting late in the game. It's getting late. Teams are tired. You see bad shots coming up. Now Patrick Wells, yes. Good shot by Bill Patrick. Good just shot. Good timing, good concentration. Just inside, so just two. And with eight minutes and 15 to go, it's a tied ball game here in the 93 Carlsberg National Championship game. The two best teams in the country on the league showing. I'll spare Kevin's blushes by saying that the two best teams in the country on league, numbers one and number two. Hey, they, uh, two best teams in the country tonight, too, because they're the only ones playing, right? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they deserve to be here. Hey, hey they both, uh, they won the game. They did what they had to do to get here. That was an excellent drive by Nick Cook. He needs to get his head up on the drive. He was so worried about his shot getting blocked that he wasn't concentrating on putting the ball in the basket. But there was good penetration getting himself down the lane. But a key foul there against Kevin St. Kitts in picture, his fourth. So they have four fouls against Nigel Lloyd and Kevin St. Kitts. Four fouls against Worthings, Nelson, and Cunningham. Cal Patrick Wells. from Mississippi University, originally from Dallas. He's played all over the place. Israel, Argentina, was with Portsmouth for a while. Obaseki. Right now, this is one of these games. Eight minutes to go, one point lead. Both teams need to start looking to go to the basket. It's been a long weekend. All right, set of shooting three-pointers. Good job, Mike, good job. They're looking to go to the basket, especially the guys from Worthing, because they're a lot more tired than the guys from what Tim's Valley would be, because they've had guys able to rest. Here's a basket. Good go. Good move. Good fast break. And a foul there against Wells as Lloyd cuts in. And here's the basket at the other end. Michael Hales resting. He just came back into the game, had a nice little blow. It's fresh, was able to put the three-pointer in. Nigel Lloyd on that play, going, he drew the foul. He did a good job of knowing that Kilpatrick wanted to block the shot. So it's a Worthing timeout. And there are the Worthing fans. Alan Cunningham there. <laughs> Alan Cunningham striving to make himself heard amidst all this. What an amazing atmosphere. This is what it's like here at the Wembley Championships. Hey, great atmosphere. Hey, good shots, good shots. Come on. What Cunningham was talking about on his timeout, he knows that Nigel Lloyd has four fouls. He sees that Nigel is checking Cleve. They're going to try to post Cleve a lot more. And Allen has realized that his team is tired. And what he told his team was, we want to go to the basket. We need things on the inside versus depending on the outside jump shots. So, Nigel Lloyd to the line. Tigers by two. Make that three. Still anybody's game. It's a game of runs. You still have seven and a half minutes to go. Three, four point game. It's still anybody's basketball game. That's the beauty of basketball. And looking really smooth, looking better now, Lloyd, than any stage in the game. It was the same in the semi-final against the London Towers. In the second half, he was a monster. Nelson. Good defense again. Wells. But they won't go in now. Irish at last. Something under the basket. Good offensive rebounding. Lester James really hasn't had a blow this half. He's getting a little bit tired. Obasek is getting a little bit tired. You have seven or, or ten exhausted people out there on the court. Hales fakes. Lloyd in to Lester James. Yeah, these guys now, with such little use of the bench from both from both teams, have got to be absolutely exhausted. The hey. adrenaline's running, but they must be hey, hey, they're definitely exhausted, but both teams want this championship. You know, they want it, they want it badly, and they're going after it. Cleve Lewis. Cunningham. Nelson. Yes. Good job. Good 15 footer. Nice, relaxed 15 footer shot by Steve Nelson. Nelson up to five. The lead down to two. Thames Valley, you sense threatening to take a lead here, but Worthing won't be shrugged off. 
Hales goes for a three-pointer. Uh, a tip out, I think, by Hales again. Not just a tip out, a foul against Michael Hales. Michael Hales, that's the kind of shot, the shot he took. Here the foul is, is the kind of shot that could break your team's back. That was an unnecessary three-point shot, and it was definitely a ne unnecessary foul. This puts it back to possibly being an even game. McBeth makes the correct move and puts Kevin St. Kitts back in and let Michael think about that for a little while. So four fouls now against Michael Hales, four against Nigel Lloyd, four against seven Kevin St. Kitts. And for Worthing, we got four against Nelson and Cunningham. Rebound from Kevin St. Kitts. And on that free throw, Steve Nelson was backing away before he even shot the basketball. Thus, the ball fell short. Nigel Lloyd. To Cook. Not that time. Massive rebound from Cunningham. Lewis. Cunningham. Super leap. Wells couldn't make it happen. Cook with Nelson in front of him. Oh dear. Good hustle back by Steve Nelson, who kind of shook Cook up. Cook was so worried about Steve Nelson that he kicked the ball out of bounds. Worthy coming back. Five and a half minutes ago. Good basketball game. Just Cook a couple of times now has been put off by the man running back with him. It was Wells before. But shooting well from outside. Here's Nelson. Cunningham. Irish goes for three. No, he doesn't. Good fake into Nelson. But they can't make those shots. Those are the kind of shots they were making in the first half. Yep, yep. They're just getting a little bit tired there. And um, those shots start to fall short a little bit. So that's why Allen was telling them, you got to realize you need to go to the basket. Good play, good pass into Colin. Over to Steve. Cleve is in there banging. Good job, good job. It's hustling, it's great basketball, it's intensity, it's fierceness, it's physical play. This is what the game of basketball is all about. Let it go up. So, jump up. Here's Lloyd, has St. Kitts with him, doesn't need him. They're ahead by four. It is nice, explodes out, takes the ball to the basket. He knew he had two guys back there, Steve Nelson, Alan Cunningham, four for four fouls. You want to go to the basket. And that's Cleve Lewis for three. Good shot, good pick and roll, good screen. And it was a good screen by Kilpatrick Wells. Nicely, Cleve put the ball nicely into the hoop. So, substitution, Michael Hales comes on. Off goes Nick Cook. A little bit dispirited. He didn't have his best patch then. Yeah, and the thing is, now that's a defensive move. Nick could give him offensive production, but he's not the greatest defensive player. And Michael Hales is the better defensive player. And he sees now that with a one-point lead, they need some defensive production. Thames Valley Tigers by one. Beaten last year by Kingston. Bidding for their first title. Kyle is on Michael Hales, and that's the end of his Wembley Championship. Hey, in and out, came in, put him on the defensive guard, took him to the basket, passed it off, but got a foul there. So to the line comes Cleve Lewis. One and one, he could put them in front again. No, he won't. Free throw line, free throw line, concentration. The last two one and ones, that's four points that they've given away that could basically give them a lead, a comfortable lead right now. Cook. Nigel Lloyd, who's played all this time, the last 10 minutes on four fouls. Lester James. I think it's a foul on Irish. Takes a tumble. White, that's what he called. No, it's a foul on Lester James. 
Hmm. What'd you think of that? I don't know about that one. No. Nope. I'm not sure either. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's forget about that. 71-70. 3-36. But Mr. James may not like that too much if it, he does get another foul in the next minute or two. Thames Valley still by one. Worthing could get ahead if they score on this offense. It's all looking a little stretched at the moment. But that's the fatigue. Good rebound, Lester James. The rebound. They need something going to the basket. Go to the basket, they get a lead, and it becomes a different game. It's a different game when you have the lead and when you are behind. So they need something going to the basket. Both teams, something going to the basket. St. Kitts. And the Lloyd. Yes, Nigel Lloyd goes for three and makes it. Good second half. And he's up to 21 points, would you believe it? 15 of them in the second half. Cleve Lewis comes back and gets him two points. Still a game. It's nip and tuck. Oh, this is one of these games that goes down to the wire. The fans at Wembley Arena are waking up, and the Worthing fans are giving them great support. Worthing fans below us all standing up now as we get into the last couple of minutes. Foul there on St. Kitts. St. Kitts is off. It's his fifth foul. That could be decisive. Hey, very much so. Colin Iris has done a great job the last two plays down on the defensive end. Drew a charge on Lester James and this play. Drew a charge on Kevin St. Kitts. It's about defense. In the championship games, it's about defense. Those are two solid, important plays by Colin Iris. Paul James comes off. A very different type of player. Guard, five foot nine. There he is on the, in the scheme of the blue knee bandage. A quick. Very fast hands, and an England international, but a very different player from Kevin St. Kitts. Colin Irish looking to level it up. Good job by Irish, good job. Good job, going to the basket, pump fake, drew the foul, had a possibility of getting a three-point play, which you had on that offensive series. The entire Worthing team posted their man up at one stage or another, Colin drove to the bucket. He was the only one really who put the ball down on the floor. He drove to the bucket and was able to pick up a foul. Great offensive series. Irish on 15 points so far. Has he got another telling contribution to make? Another free throw. Another free throw. That's been that's the difference right now. Is who's making the free throws in the second half? Who's making the free throws down the stretch? Yes, he makes the second, but the percentage is falling. They're only one point down into the last two minutes then. Paul James. Nigel Lloyd calling for motion. Paul James has to penetrate. Right now, he's non effect on the offensive end. He has to give some penetration. Cook goes for the three. Misses. Irish. And suddenly, Worthing look like the likelier winners. There's purpose and optimism about everything in their play. They believe they're going to turn this round. Great defensive block by Mike. Good block. Cunningham has the ball. Nelson. Irish. No. Great rebound from Lester James. <laughs> you got to love this. This is going down to the wire here. All the way down to the wire. Both semifinals were like that. Yeah, in this case of Ken Worthing. Play another game down to the wire. They're in good position. 51 seconds to go, down by one point. They're going to get the last two shots of the game. They're in very good position right now. Nigel Lloyd goes for three, misses. Irish has Nelson in front of him. Here's Stevie Nelson. Misses. Oh, lucky rebound. He misses that one. But he's got a foul. Stevie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> This situation is, is basically the same as the game we saw on Sky Sports in, 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 uh, in, in, early, in late March. 
So timeout called. Here's Mickey Bet. His team lead by one. There's 33 seconds left. And here's Gunning. Who would you feel happier for at the moment? They're the leading scorers, Nigel Lloyd and Cleve Lewis for their respective teams. Which coach would you feel has got the happier time out at the moment? I would think Tim's Valley. Because one, Worthing has to go to the free throw line and make two free throws. And Tim Valley has the last shot of the game to win it or if the game happens to be tied to go into overtime. So they have to be comfortable. The major thing they have to concentrate on is that on the free throw, everybody has to block out to make sure that they secure a rebound if there is a missed shot. On the Worthing end, they want to come two free throws. They need the two free throws here, and they want tough defense. Everybody playing tough D. When the shot goes up, it must go everybody to the rebound, and they have to remember the last time they were in the situation. Nigel Lloyd held the ball out front, went by Cunningham, went by Spain, drove to the basket, laid it off to Kevin St. Kitts for a bucket that beat him by three points at Tim's Valley in, uh, in late March. Another timeout, back to back timeouts now. Mike, rest in there. Nigel. Here's Mickey Bell. They will lay flat on this, right? Rest, you can up the screen to the left. Mike and Mark in the double screen. Come out too early. Nick, you're coming off your shot. Well, what a up. moment for Mickey Bet. 30 roll. seconds away. His first right, year as coach. 30 seconds away from it. taking his We're going team about eight to the Wembley Champions. Right. Last shot of the game. And there's Steven Nelson who missed twice in the last few seconds. But still, One, two, three, could make it all look good. And the major thing with this is, if Steve goes up and makes the first free throw, the teammates need to basically let, acknowledge him, but stay away from him. You don't want him to get satisfied with just one free throw. You want him to get up there and keep his concentration and make the two free throw shots. And there's the support, and there's the responsibility. And Wembley definitely is a wolf. You gotta love it, baby. You gotta love it. Yes. Nothing but the net. And Tim Valley needs to make sure they block out because Nelson is backing off the free throw line as he shoots the basketball. Worthing are in front. 33 seconds left. One thing about this, you guarantee the basketball, we're going to have a winner. <laughs> so here he comes, Nigel Lloyd. He's going to take his time and make this one count. Running the clock right down. I would say with about 12 seconds to go, he needs to start making his move, going to the basket, trying to see what's going to happen. Screen on the ball, double pick for Cook. Nigel's gonna have to penetrate now. He's got to take a shot. Five seconds left. Go past the mic. There's a foul call. Oh! It's a traveling oh. foul. <laughs> traveling foul. <Yes. court. laughs> Worthing have got possession. There's one second left. There's one second left. They haven't won. They're in front by one. They won now. It's over. They've done it. <laughs> that Worthing. was a basketball game. Stevie Nelson is raised up to the sky, but there's the man, Alan Cunningham, champion again. What spirit, what a team, champions for the first time, Worthing. Hey, this was a great basketball game. I was glad to be here, glad to be part of it. I know everybody in this arena, no one, no one, no one, had a chance to take the eyes off the game the last couple of minutes. Everybody, everybody, win or lose, this is one of those kind of games where I talked about intensity, aggressiveness, hard work, determination. It was there from both sides. A fantastic occasion for the first time in their history, the champions of the land. 
75-74. We'll be right back for the official celebrations right after this. Welcome back. Wembley shows that Worthing are the 1993 Carlsberg champions. They're the league champions as well. They beat Thames Valley by one point. Some of the Thames Valley fans reckon they're the victim of an injustice, though, with the last move of the game. Here's Kevin. Now just shoots a short shot. Mike over second goes up. I said defense wins championships. Colin Irish makes a champion defensive move. And no foul. Certainly no foul given. And Irish celebrates. And Worthing are home by just one point. Unbelievable celebrations. And the presentation going on right now. Alan Cunningham going up to receive the championship of 1993. Here he is, and he takes with him Colin Irish, the man he brought from Kingston at the beginning of the season. The two old warriors, as he calls them, going up to receive the trophy from Dave Edwards, the sponsorship manager of Carlsberg. There they are then, Cunningham and Irish. Great reward. Hey, they deserve it. They deserve to be there together. They both had a great season. They complimented each other. And I'm very happy for Al. Milking the support from the Worthing fans who have been voted Club of the Year for all their support. Fantastic performance from them all, but particularly for that man, 38-year-old Alan Cunningham. Well, an unbelievable occasion. The atmosphere is still deafening, and this is the reason why. Alan, congratulations. Thank you very much, Simon. You uh, must feel a little bit relieved because in the second half, they kept on coming at you. Yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, we knew they were going to be coming back. We knew it was going to hard part to catch it, to keep our lead. And it was. I mean, we came out the second half. We jumped on the first five minutes. But unfortunately, we didn't have the bench that they have. We got tired. We were in foul trouble. We just trying to lay off. They started making a lot of uh, good plays. But uh, I called timeouts and look, guys, we haven't got long to go. Like three minutes left in this game. We're a bunch of old warriors. Let's all just keep our heads, try and move the ball around, try and get them as tired as us, work around, get them in foul trouble, stay off the referees, and see, see if we can get out of here. And it, and it worked. Just, just. Talk, talk about the old warriors, but it was a young warrior who came good down the clutch, Stevie Nelson. That's right. Steve has had a, a brilliant year for us. He's come along. He, played, he left Kingston with the Derby last year. I, I picked him up and said, Steve, look, I need you to come up and do a job for me. I don't have a point guard. He did that. He came out today. He played like old Stevie Nelson. No longer the young Steve Nelson. We got to call him the. We got to call him a veteran from now on. I've been calling him a rookie for too long now. So, and he hit the two clutch free throws. I mean, and, and that's something. We got 8,000 screaming fans in here telling you, uh, trying to make you miss the ball, miss the basket. It's easy to put you off. And believe me, he stepped up there like an old true warrior, and he hit it. I know you're a true optimist, but if you take yourself back to last summer, did you think any of this would really be possible? Not really. Last summer. Time, I can honestly say I had quit. <laughs> I said, I'm through, that's it. My body can't take it. You know, I really don't want much to do with basketball anymore. I was looking for a job. Uh, I thank Worthy for coming along and saying, look, Alan, uh, we think you're a great player. We think you will be a great coach. Why don't you come and help us out? I thought about it, say, right, as long as I can have fun, as long as I can come out and do it my way, I got no problems. And that's what they did. Let me come out and do it my way, and here we are. Fantastic. Your coach next year, will you play as well? No, so I'm, I'm going to tell you now, I'm officially, y'all can put this on record, officially hanging in my boots and stuff for fun, fun, fun. That means games that don't matter. If I want to suit up, I will. But otherwise, it's time for me to put on a suit. Time to let the young guys get on with it because I'm knackered. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Alan. I say this honestly, you've made a terrific contribution to British basketball. Congratulations for all you've done, particularly for tonight. Thank you very much, Simon. And I'd like to say to all the worthy fans, to my family, Pat, Carlton, hey, thank you for supporting me all these years, and uh, hopefully there's more to come. Alan Cunningham, a fantastic occasion. That's the end then. I hope you've enjoyed it from Sky Sports and all of us here at Wembley. Goodbye. <laughs>